Welcome to How to Pitch to Investors in Under Two Minutes. Whether you're pitching to friends, family, angels, or venture capitalists, you need to have a great two-minute talk in order for them to get interested and tell you, hey, that sounds interesting. I'd like to hear more. The techniques and information I pass on to you through this video absolutely will change how you think about presenting your two-minute pitch. I'm Nathan Gold, Chief Coach of The Demo Coach. Now I know you've paid for this video, so I'm not going to spend any time telling you about me, what I've done, and who I've helped. You can go to my website, democoach.com, and find out all the information that you might want to know about me. So this is really about you. Let's get to it. First of all, the most important thing to think about is that the two minutes that you give in describing what you do to other people could be the most important two minutes of your life. It's really the two minutes that get people to say, oh, that's interesting. Can you tell me some more? Or I'd love to hear more. Contact me next week so I can set up a meeting and we can sit down and talk about it. The most important thing you think about here is that you must concentrate on what these two minutes are all about. They're looking at you saying, so what do you do? Or what does your company do? It's like this ferocious animal looking at you, waiting for you to give them the answer so they don't pounce on you. So what's the most important thing you can accomplish in the two minutes? Think about that for a moment. I coach people to think about the only important thing for those two minutes is to get people to like you. Seriously, they need to like you so that they'll say to you, hey, that's interesting, I'd like to get some more information from you. You know, if people don't like you or they don't really have any affinity toward you, they're probably not gonna ask you for much more information. So take the time to make sure that your two minutes is compelling and memorable so that people will literally open their arms to you. Now, one of the most important things you can think about when considering your two minutes is you need to have a script. If you don't have a script, you'll just be talking and talking and talking and the two minutes will go on before you even know it. So it's really important that you write a script. And most importantly about that script is that you memorize that script. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. It's really very, very simple. There are three parts to the script. Number one is the opening. This is where you grab their attention and get them to think to themselves, whoo, I can't wait to hear more. Then there's the middle part of the presentation where you tell people what you do, who's on your team, and a little bit more information as well. And then the third area is the close. And that's the point where you ask for the appointment or their business card or whatever it is you're looking for. So let's break this down into the three individual components of the opening, the middle, and the close. All right, the opening. This is one of the areas where I find people are the weakest. They start off by saying, hello, I'm Nathan Gold, the CEO of The Demo Coach, and thank you for your time today. And then they go on to what they do. That's like what everybody else does. But you need a hook. You need a grabber. You need something that will cause the person you're looking at, you're pitching to, or the group that you're pitching to, to perk up their ears and say, oh, this sounds interesting. I'd like to hear more. You need to set a hook. Now let's talk about how you set that hook. Because the hook is specifically supposed to determine what is the problem or the unmet need that you're solving. Now, I'm not here to tell you that you're supposed to tell people what you do right away, but you can use a way of introducing what you do in a very special way that most people don't even think about. Let's talk about that. When you go to an investor to tell them what you're doing, remember, they've seen a lot of people coming through. They've heard a lot. They read a lot. So you need to do something, say something, or do something that sets you apart from the crowd. And I don't mean just to stand on your hands, but I mean to do something that's so dramatically different that the people you're pitching to will never forget you forever. You need to be bold. You need to stand out. You need to do something different than everybody else. And I'm here to tell you what that is. I'm here to share with you the best way you can separate yourself from the masses of people that are looking to raise money. And here's the answer. It's an acronym that I came up with many years ago so that you can very easily remember what to do in the opening that can make you different than everybody else. And the word is same. You don't want to be the same as everybody else. And the way to not be the same as everybody else is to do things that nobody else is doing. Now let's take a look at what this acronym stands for. 
There are two S's, which is what the squared means. The first S is, it stands for stories. Not enough people tell stories, but you can tell stories, especially small, quick, relevant stories in the beginning of a presentation that will absolutely hook your investor to want to hear the rest of your two minutes. So you could potentially start out with a 15, 20 second story, and that story could be anything relevant to what you're talking about. It could be where your logo came from. It could be the, the genesis of the name of your company. It could be something that happened last week that leads you into the discussion that you're here to give them. So remember, use a story in the opening so that it can help you set yourself apart from other people. Because more than likely, you'll tell a story that's nowhere near the same as anybody else. Now let's jump to the end of this acronym, SAME, and look at the E. The E stands for examples. When people tell people what they do for a living or what they do in their company, they'll often use examples. And this is kind of the go-to place for how to explain to somebody what you do, no matter how complex it is. But examples can sometimes be very narrow and specific and not give people enough information about what you do in order for them to really understand. So examples, while good, I tend to use as a last resort in most cases because there are better ways. And let me give you an example of one before I tell you what the other S, A and M mean. A few months ago, I ran into someone and as I normally do, I said, so what do you do? And the gentleman looked at me, he says, Nathan, I am the CEO of Surfing Unlimited and we do for surfing what the chairlift does for snow skiers. I thought, wow, that's a pretty interesting opening statement. He says, yeah, you know, the problem with skiing is getting to the top of the mountain and the chairlift fixed that by letting you get up and down as many times as you possibly can. With surfing, there's the same problem, getting out to the waves. So at Surfing Unlimited, we're the first company to embed a small electric motor in the bottom of the surfboard and on your thumb, you have a wireless controller. And when you press that controller, it engages the motor and takes you out to the wave you want to surf. You surf in. You turn the board around, press the button, and get right back out to the next wave. And then he went on to discuss more about what he did. What did he do in the first sentence? We do for surfing what the chairlift does for snow skiers. He used something that very often we see in, in life all the time, but we forget. And that is an analogy. He used an analogy that helped me understand or get a, re a reference for what it is he did. And that's what the A stands for in SANE. Use an analogy. A strong analogy can hook your audience so quickly that they'll never let go until you're done with your two minutes. The S, that stands for simile. And the M, that stands for metaphor. In your opening, you need to have more similes, analogies, metaphors, and stories if you're going to make a lasting impression, especially metaphors. Metaphors can be so strong that you can use them throughout your whole presentation and summarize with that metaphor being the last thing that they hear. And your metaphor is going to be different than everybody else's, hopefully. Now, where do you go to get similes, analogies, and metaphors? There are lots of places to go. They're all over the place. I collect similes, analogies, and metaphors. Every time I see them, I either take a picture of the sign that's got an analogy on it, or I'll write it down. And what you're looking at right now on the screen is just a partial listing of the file that I keep, just everything I find. I don't care what it is, or where it is, or how it relates to anything. I just keep a record of it because ultimately I need to sit down and help people become creative or get creative. And I need to get creative too. Here's another example. On the screen, you see a, a police dog. I once asked a canine officer, how, do you do, how does a dog really smell the difference between the drugs that are in the vehicle or in the case? He says, Nathan, think about it this way. When a pizza man walks up to you with a pizza in their hands and you smell something, what is it that you smell? I said, I smell a pizza. He says, when a pizza man walks up to a canine dog, the dog smells the yeast, the garlic, the onions, the peppers, and every other spice and ingredient in that pizza, and that's how they can distinguish between the different things they're looking for. 
Now, rather than get into a long scientific discussion about how the dog's nose works, that really helps you understand how the dog's nose works, right? Simple as that. And that's how quickly you can discuss what your business is to other people and make them understand it in a quick second without long drawn out discussions. Now it takes time to find the right analogy or metaphor or simile that you can use in your business. But I guarantee you, the longer you search and the harder you work on it, you'll find something that will mean the difference between people getting it and people just not getting it. And if you want investors to look up to you and say, wow, that's really cool stuff. I Let's talk about that some more. I personally encourage you come up with some similes, analogies, and metaphors that can help people understand what it is you do. And it will mean the difference between a lasting impression and one that's just fleeting. Now, a couple encouraging hints that you can use to, to find metaphors, similes, and analogies. On the screen right now, you see a couple logos. One is iStock Photo, and the other is Getty Images. Most of the time when you're trying to be creative, we're, we're, we sit down and we try to think of things, but that's only the left side of the brain working. I need you to get the right side of the brain working too. So take a look at your executive summary as an example. And in the first paragraph, pick out one or two or three words or a phrase that describes your business. Go to iStock Photo. It's a free site. You don't have to buy anything right away. It's a free search site anyway. Put in that search term and come up with some pictures that will help you trigger associations in your head that will begin to get you thinking about similes, analogies, and metaphors. All right. It also might trigger a story that you remember from a while back that makes perfect sense to opening up a two-minute talk to an investor. And then finally, if you're looking for sound bites and taglines and titles, one of the best places on this planet to get inspiration is in the last logo you see on the screen right now called Reader's Digest. Readersdigest.com has some of the most incredible writers on the planet. You go there, look at their titles and their, lo and their uh, descriptions of things, and you'll find things that you can use just substituting words to make it yours. All right, so that's it on the opening. The most important thing you can do is set the hook. And in order to do that hook or the grabber or whatever it is you want to call it, you need a simile, an analogy, or a good metaphor that will help people understand exactly what your business is and they won't even question it. Now, one last thing about a metaphor. The most effective metaphors, similes, analogies are ones that have nothing to do with the business you're in. So don't say something like, we're going to be the Google of the social world. It's like, oh yeah, right. Don't use a technical reference. The further away from technology you can be in your metaphor, the more effective it will be. It has to be something like, we're like, a, we're like the contractor of a building. We hire the subcontractors for the electrical and the plumbing and everything else, and we take care of everything so that you don't have to worry about anything. Without our product, you have to go hire each of those individual people to build that building. We take care of it all for you. Something like that, that gives people a complete understanding for what you do, that makes sense, is all you need when it comes to an opening. And that will set you apart from everyone. And again, the further away from it is from technical comparisons, the better off you'll be. All right, let's take a look at the middle part of your two minutes. There's a number of models here that you can use and I'm not suggesting that the model I'm about to show you right now is the only one out there. There's plenty of them. Feel free to experiment and play around with the different ones. But here are six questions that you should answer in those two minutes. And they can all be answered with one or two sentences, so it's not that detailed in terms of how much you give away. Remember, the point of these two minutes is simply to get someone to say, that's interesting, I'd like to hear more. Or they say, that's not interesting. I don't want to have anything to do with that. And you look at them and say, great, do you know anybody who does? All right, so let's take a look in the middle now. The number one question after you've done your opener is, what is your product or service? That's it, very simply in one or two sentences. What is it? What is it? Number two, who is your market? It's very important that people know who is your market. And by the way, the order of these questions has been well thought out. 
So I wouldn't go changing the order until you've become real comfortable with them and then you can experiment later on. Number three, how will you make money? This is one of those questions on investors' minds that sometimes people forget about. They get so deep into the technical and the excitement about the intellectual property and the patents, they forget about how will you make money because ultimately the investor only cares about how you're going to make money so that they can make a return on their investment, right? Number four, who is behind the company? This is where in one or two sentences you give a brief description of the people that are going to build this company and these products or this service. Number five, and this is really important, is who are your competitors? Now you don't have to necessarily name them by name, maybe by category, but it's important that you recognize that you have competitors out there and that one simple statement is maybe something like this. Yes, we have some formidable competitors out there such as X, Y, and Z, but I want you to know that what we're here to do and what we're here to accomplish is something that they have never even thought about, best we can tell, and then get back to what you do. So recognize you have competitors, but get back to what you do. And then finally, number six, and this is your big one, this one you really have to think hard about because you've got to pick out one, maybe two at most, what is your competitive advantage? What do you do that's so much better and so much of an advantage that no matter what anybody else does or says or tries to do in your space, you're going to kick their pants? As an example, on the screen right now, you're looking at a very well-kept secret. It's the fastest urban electric car on the planet. It's years old. It's, I, th I think they started in 2008. It's called the Tango. And it can do zero to 60 in under four seconds. It can also give you 600 miles to a single charge. Now, even the Tesla can't do that. Here's an example, take a look. And that car is for sale right now, it costs the same amount of money as the Tesla, available in Washington, state as well as around the world, made in Italy, it's beautiful. Do you have that kind of competitive advantage? You need one. Now that summarizes the middle, the six questions. What is your product or service? Who is your market? How will you make money? Who's behind the company? Who are your competitors? And what is your competitive advantage? And now the conclusion. You're done with the opening, you're done with the middle part, they're hooked and now it's time for you to close. And it's not good enough to just say, okay, thank you. That's a cheap way out. That's not a powerful way to close. Let's take a look at some parts of the close. The number one thing that I see people do not do in their close is they forget to ask for what they want. What do you want? Do you want their business card? Do you want an appointment next week? Do you want to know if they have any interest in what they've just heard? You need to have the intestinal fortitude to ask for what you want. Do you want a reference? Do you want to sit down and talk about your business in more detail and get their opinions? Do you want to ask for, I mean, what is it, what is it you want to ask? Ask. And if you're afraid to ask, you need help. You need help in the sales area. You need help from somebody who's really good at asking for the order and get them to help you figure out what it is you're asking for and then ask for it. And then finally, in conclusion, there's one other piece of intellectual property that, the, that I'd like to pass on to you that comes from the demo coach. It's called the Columbo Close. Now, most of you have heard of Detective Columbo, and as you know, the whole idea behind his detective show was he was this bumbling fool who didn't know anything about, he couldn't figure out the case until the very end when he would say, I have just one more question. And in my experience, one of the best ways to leave your investor with a final thought is to use what I call the Columbo Close. And here's how it works. At the very tail end of your two minutes, when you have 15 or so, 20 seconds left, remember this is after you've done your ask, you say, in conclusion, I'd like to leave you with one thought. And that thought is, and then you give them the thought that you want them to remember and say, thank you very much. Let me give you an example of a company I worked with recently that we used the Columbo Close on. It was an Irish company that had a device 
that a veterinarian could draw blood from a horse, put it into the device, and it would give you readouts of about five different tests right then and there in the field. And this was, this was life-changing. Normally, you have to send the blood to the lab, wait a day or two or a week, and then get it back, and the horse could be dead by then. So at the end of this presentation, ePona, the name of the company, came up and they said, in conclusion, we'd like to leave you with one thought. As you leave here today and you drive down the roadside farms and you see horses standing in the field, you'll know that today you saw a technology that will forever change how a veterinarian will administer medications and assistance to the horse in the field because of the device from ePona. Thank you very much. And then they were finished. And I encourage all of you to come up with something that you can put in the minds of your investors so that at some time in the future, when they see something, they'll recognize and remember you from what they saw. And in conclusion, I'd like to leave you with one final thought. And that is, when you present your two minutes to a single investor or a bank of investors, I highly encourage you to remember that once you have that script memorized and it's indelibly inscribed in your brain, rehearsed, rehearsed, rehearsed so that you can just come out with it. The most important thing you can do is let your passion and enthusiasm for your topic come across. Your passion and your enthusiasm for your business has to come across. If you don't communicate your passion and transfer your enthusiasm to your audience, you're just like everybody else. And I encourage you, think about how you're presenting, not just what you're presenting. And we'll talk more about that in another series. Now for your homework. I've come up with some homework for you. It's up to you whether you do it or not, and I hope you've really enjoyed some of the information that I've given to you in this series. And now for you to really take advantage of it, I encourage you, number one, sit down, start making a list of all of the similes, analogies, metaphors, examples, and stories that you and the people in your company have been using and telling. Ask everyone in your company to make that list and then come together and compare that list and keep that list growing. Eventually you're going to find something that works. And you don't have to look for just one, by the way. You can have many different metaphors. One really strong metaphor that you can hang your hat on can really be a wonderful thing for a marketing group to have. But frequently, you'll have multiple similes or analogies that you'll use that will help people in different categories, maybe in different parts of the world, to understand what you do. Speaking of that, metaphors can be cultural. So be very careful and test out your metaphors before you use them blindly around the world. Number two, Fill out the answers to the six questions that we talked about for the middle of your two minutes. Start with one or start with two. I'll give you a little easier one. Start with two sentences to answer each of those questions. If you want to go three, you can try three, but the time you get to three, plus an opening and a closing, you're going to have too much. So try two sentence answers for each of those six questions, and then fine-tune it. Fine-tune it down to just the right words and phrases that you need and memorize that. Number three on the homework is to figure out how you're going to close. Figure out your Columbo close. And you'll find that you'll end on a much higher note than just, oh, thank you very much, or I'm done. Okay? The Columbo close can set you apart from everyone else. Number four is you must rehearse. I can't tell you this any other way. If you're going to come across in your two minutes with passion, enthusiasm, credibility, and everything else you want to convey to your investor, you must rehearse it. In fact, you should memorize your two minutes so it pops out of your head without even thinking about it. And in order to memorize it, I would give the average person about two to three hours of rehearsal before you've got those two minutes down pat so that you can deliver them with passion and enthusiasm without thinking, oh, what's the next word? So give yourself a couple, two or three hours over a week or two's time. Don't try to do it all at once, unless that's who you are. Give yourself time, rehearse it, record it, play it back, listen to it. One of the best ways to know if you sound great is to record it and play it back. You don't have to use a video recorder, just use your phone or your recording device and play it back to yourself. Listen to it over and over and over again. 
when you get one good recording of the of the two minute pitch record it play it back over and over and over again and that will help you memorize and then finally how else can I say this number five get some coaching no matter how great you think you are as a presenter getting a coach to help you get better can only help every professional athlete out there has coaches and some have multiple coaches there's life coaches there's presentation coaches there's pitch coaches I encourage you to get a coach have someone look at what you're doing from the outside having someone look with fresh eyes into what you're doing can often give you insight that you couldn't possibly get from anybody that works for you they all have blinders on have somebody from the outside listen to your two-minute pitch and say wow that's interesting or yeah if you have a PR firm go to the PR firm and let them help you as well in conclusion I want to thank you very much for spending your time with me here to learn how to pitch to an investor in under two minutes what we've just talked about here can be used with friends family angels or venture pitching it makes no difference you just need a good opening a couple of answers to the questions in the middle and a good close with with an ask for what you're looking for I'm happy to help review your two-minute pitch at any time. You can contact me at www.democoach.com or use the information right on the screen that you're looking at now. Feel free to call me as well, and I look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you very much, and take care.